Fit Hawk family, welcome back. And today, I'm gonna give you the top two mistakes on why your back isn't growing. Now, initially, it was gonna be the number one mistake why your back's not growing, but then I went to the gym the other day, and I'm watching this guy do lat pull downs, and then I'm watching him move over to pull ups, and I'm like, how the hell is he getting any back activation with what he's doing? So then I sat there and I thought, and a little bell went off, it said ding, ding, ding. There's two mistakes that the common man does when he does back. So let's get into mistake number two. Don't use momentum while you're doing your workouts. Now, I'm gonna explain that a little bit more in depth, but what I mean is these examples right here. You see the pull-ups? Using a lot of momentum to get up, right? You see the uh, lat pull-downs? I'm pretty much doing half the movement with momentum. Same with the dumbbell rows. I'm doing the second part of that movement by bringing my chest down and doing momentum. We wanna cancel that out. So when you hear a lot of YouTubers and stuff talk about uh, momentum reps, that they're good for growth, you gotta understand what they're talking about. They're not talking about set one, rep one, use momentum. They're talking about last set, last few reps, momentum, right? After you exhausted all your muscle, you've done good form reps, now your last set to get a few extra just to completely exhaust the muscle, now you use a little momentum just to finish off the muscle. But you never start with momentum. Instead, you need to start like this. You need to start with great form so that the muscle is getting contraction through the whole movement. When you use momentum, your muscle doesn't contract through the whole movement. So just like you see these exercises, form, controlled, really focusing on mind-muscle connection. So when you, do, and when you do that, your body will grow exponentially, especially your back. The thing with momentum is, it's a very good tool to use after you have the form down. It's never a good tool to use to start your sets to do more weight, okay? If you have to use momentum on the first set, lower the weight, just do it, okay? Uh, but the reason why that is, is because when you're using momentum, so say for the, uh, the pull-ups, right? When I use momentum, the bottom part was the momentum. So if you see me, I was using my feet to get up to right here, and then I was using my back for the rest, right? So that means this whole movement from here to here, that wasn't my back, that was momentum getting me here. Then at the second half of that movement, I'm getting the back. Therefore, you're not getting the full contraction because I'm momentum to here, and then I'm uh, get a little contraction and go down. You're skipping half the workout basically with momentum. Same right here. When I was using the lap pull down, I was using momentum to get right here, and then I was doing the second half with my back. So this whole first half coming down, I'm not using my back, I'm using momentum. You see where momentum can, can, can steer you the wrong way? Half the movement is momentum, and then the other half is your back, meaning your back's not getting the full workout that it needs. So we need to cancel our momentum, use it when it counts. Use it on the last set, you did uh, your eight to 12 reps, and now you're like, I need a couple more, I'm gonna get them, I'm gonna ex exasperate the muscle, and now you're like, ugh, ugh, but your muscle's already exhausted. This part of the movement is exhausted because you actually use the muscle for this part of the movement, now momentum, just to finish off the stronger part of the movement. You get what I'm saying? I hope so, if not, rewind, listen to it again, <laughs> you know what I mean? Now let's move on to the number one mistake. And now remember, a lot of you guys that watch these videos aren't subscribed. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit that like button. It helps me out a lot. I gave a whole bunch of free knowledge on fitness. You might as well if you want to be a beast. All right, the number one tip, and you've heard me say it in the back workouts before, but I know that it's been overlooked, okay? <clears throat> and this is the number one thing that I see when people are working out, and I'm like, how the hell are you getting a full contraction in your back? When you're working out back, you want to make sure that the muscles in your back are being used. <laughs> Duh, right? So you want to make sure that your chest is it caved in, because I want you to do this by yourself. I want you to cave your chest in, and then I want you to try to flex your back, try to flex the, the lower traps, try to flex, flex the mid back, try to flex the top back. You just it, top a little bit, maybe major minor, but other than that, the rest of my back cannot flex, okay, because my chest is caved in. Now put your chest up and out like this, instantly you feel your middle back flex and your lower back flex, including your middle traps, okay? That lets you know right there that there's no way to work middle back traps like this. There's no way, right? Bam! That works your whole back. So now when you're doing exercises like the lat pull down like this, I see a lot of people to get the weight down there, they're here and they're like, uh, uh, right? 
That's wrong. Completely wrong. <laughs> okay? You want to get your back to look nice, chest up, come here. Mm. Now the whole back is flaring. The lats, the traps, all of it. And I can feel it, right? That's like the main thing. If, if people would just do that, everything, even for cedar rows. If you're doing a cedar row here, I see a lot of people like this, and they're like pulling me in like this. I'm like, how can you flex your whole back? You can get your lats like that, just the, just the very outside of the lats. You might be able to get a little bit wider, but as far as the deep, nice 3D effect, there's no way. When you're doing your rows, you can stretch like this, and then when you come chest up, you come flex. Just doing this without weight, I can feel my back flexing. Same thing with rows. You're here. If you don't flex your, if you don't lift your chest up, you're just getting a little bit of the lat. That's it. Once you come here and you lift your, your chest up, you're here, that whole side of the back is working. Mainly lats, but you're getting all the little tiny muscles in the back as well. So, for me, when I started bodybuilding and I started taking it serious, I started finding techniques like this. And I, started, I learned them from my dad because he was a very good bodybuilder. And just that uh, lifting my chest up, within a year, my back looked magnificent. Now you can see from the thumbnail picture that I always have, my back is one of my best attributes. And that's because genetics, obviously, but these little tips and tricks, especially the chest, that'll change the game. I guarantee you, if you do this, lift your chest up, do it for all your back workouts for the next three months, and then let me know what you think, right? But if this has been helpful for, to you, let me know in the comments, man. If you wanna know any other tips and tricks to any other body parts, let me know in the comments. But other than that, do this for three months and come back and let me see the results because you're back home beating nice. But that's it. I told you, nice, short, sweet, and simple. Those are the top two mistakes that I see people doing why their back isn't growing. Momentum, not having the chest up, not being able to flex. So get it right because we out here trying to be beast fit. Law family, let's go. I'm going to see y'all later. I ain't even going to do this. Takes too much time. I'm out.